Hello, hello, welcome. Just getting my apron on. Because anyone who knows me, I will get paint everywhere if I don't have an apron on. Um, so hello, welcome back to another painting class. If you are watching the uh, live stream, uh, make sure to say hi in the comments. And if you're watching the replay, um, I will leave timestamps below as always, and you can skip ahead if you'd like, or you can watch this um, and get all the information for, you know, upcoming stuff and stuff. Um, let me turn off the fan real fast. should be better oh, light flickering hello welcome in I'm excited you are all here uh, yeah so let me know uh, let me know where you're painting from who you're painting with um, yeah, if you don't have the exact colors that is totally fine um, that's one of the reasons why I don't list the exact brand or the exact um like color like if it's we're using a pink it could be magenta i think the the color and the brand that i have is rose but it's just whatever pink you have so it doesn't it doesn't matter what like exact color necessarily um so yeah i hope that answers your question um i'm just gonna get out Speaking of paints, I'm going to go ahead and get out mine. I've been using Hippie Crafters um, paints, which I really like, but I've been using them so much that <laughs> I am very low on white, so I have to use a different brand of white because most of this painting, at least the background, is white. So we will be using a lot of that. But I do still have to draw on my traceable. If you are interested in a traceable, um, they are available for all Patreon supporters. Um, Patreon is a website where you can um, essentially donate um, monthly on either a recurring basis or you can subscribe for one month and then, and then cancel. Um, it's up to you. Um, but it's just a way to support me um, it's like a tip but then also you get rewards so you get things like traceables you can get extra classes that are um, exclusive to patreon which is really cool um, and i do like art challenges and other things and um, for the higher tiers you can have like extras like zoom classes and um or like I, i'll send out a postcard um, like of my work so there's some fun things in there if you want to check that out um, but I do have a traceable for those of you who are not comfortable drawing a bird um, and that's like not your forte I do have that available in my patron for any tier um, and it starts at five dollars so you so you'll not only get um, today's traceable but for um, the I think the Aloha Beach is also in this month, but you'll also have access to every single other traceable for any of my live classes that I've ever done. Um, so that's a really cool thing if you're interested in traceables and other rewards. Um, but with that, um, this is what today's traceable looks like. It's a little bird and you'll be able to draw it on. Um, Gabby asked, will this class be available to watch later? I'm not feeling well um, at the moment, but would like to watch during the weekend. Yes, all of my live classes on YouTube, all of my free live classes um, do save. So you can always watch it later um, when you're feeling better. So don't feel, don't feel like you need to paint right now. Um, it'll be on, it'll be, it'll be there forever. <laughs> Oh, I'll let me give you a sneak peek. I'll share when we start um, for the announcements, but I painted this for my patrons and it's so pretty. I love it. It also matches my nails <laughs> right now. <laughs> but um, I was really excited for that one. And that's uh, one, of the, one of the classes that we did this month for that. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my paints out. And thank you for whoever posted the um, the colors earlier. I wasn't on, um, so I couldn't answer that question, but thank you for um, answering that question. Um, so yeah, so the colors are, I'm just gonna read them here. Um, titanium white, which I will probably be using the end of this. Um, let's see. Black, blue. Now I'm not totally sure what blue I'm going to use. And that's one of the reasons why I just put blue because sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to choose. Um, cause I have this like, um, I have this kind of, it's like a faded, it's cobalt blue. Um, but I always thought cobalt was like a little bit darker. I guess that's phthalo, phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. I'm gonna get out my cobalt and my phthalo blue and I'll, I'll decide in a little bit which one I want to use. Um, let's see, for yellows, I'm just gonna, just medium yellow, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so for the red or the pink, the red is really just there if you don't have a pink and you want to make a pink. Um, so if you don't have pink, um, get your red out. If you have a pink, then you probably won't need red because um, any of the orangey colors in the painting we can make with pink and yellow. We don't necessarily need the red. So that's just an extra color that you really don't, you don't need. Um, but obviously if you don't have pink, then you'll need, um, you'll need red. Um, hi, Angela. Yeah, let me know where everybody's painting from. I always love hearing where everybody's from. Um, and then raw umber. This is burnt umber. I like using raw umber because it's got that... I can get a darker tone with it without adding black. And if I need to lighten it up, um, I can always do that. But I think the the raw umber, or the um, the brown that we're using in here... Um, I believe, let me look at the picture real fast, um, but the, the, the reason we're using the brown is for, like, the stems and stuff like that, and it's, it's kind of got that, like, gray tint versus, like, a burnt sienna, which has got that orange, um, really warm glow, and that's not really the brown that we're going for. You'd have to add black to that to, like, dull it down, and, um... So you have, if you have like a burnt umber or raw umber, I'll be using raw umber. Um, yeah. Um, also, you can use green if you need to. I would suggest it's a color that you don't need because we are going to be having our yellow and our blue already on the canvas um, which we can mix into this really bright like the green that's on here like I want to say it's almost yellow um, it's so bright that you really don't even need you won't need green like the leaves are a really bright yellow green so most of it will probably be yellow, and then there's a there's a couple um there's a couple fall color leaves in here. This one's gonna be fun. I'm excited for this one. Um, let's see. Hi, Janice from Alabama. Shay, is it Shia or Shay? From Crystal Lake. Where's Crystal Lake? Um, Terry from Idaho. Hello. Uh, tips on getting out of an art block. Mm. I would say have some sort of, so that's actually one of the reasons why I started doing um, my art challenges in my Patreon because I had always wanted to start doing, um, I had always wanted to start doing watercolor and but be, I didn't know where to start I felt like it was like one of those art blocks that's like you know when you first start a, like a medium and you don't know you don't know what to draw you don't know what to where to go from um so in my patreon 
Um, so if you're interested in the art challenges, um, I essentially give a prompt of either a theme um, or a subject, and then I give you a color, uh, like a color, um, either like five to six colors that you can use. And that really narrows down what you can paint. Um, and for me, it's really helped in watercolor being able to be like, okay, at least now I have a like some sort of a guideline that I can go off of and it's not like overwhelming like oh I can paint anything so I would say um, if you're not a patron of mine and you're in an art block I would say to look up a, like a color theme palette of some sort um, and then I don't know maybe look up like a random word or something like that or a random subject um, or maybe ask you know a loved one like pick a subject or a you know, uh, a theme of something. Um, yeah, I can check my, I can check my audio. I just don't want to touch it because last time I touched it, it like freaked out and it changed. Um, let me, um, hello. I'm also talking. Well, usually it is louder. Um, anyways, Micah, um, so if you're in the art block, um, I would just, you could ask those around you um, for inspiration and say, hey, like, what, what should I draw? What should I paint? You know, whatever medium you're using. Um, even if it's something that you're like, oh, I don't really want to paint that, just do it. Just do it. And, um, it'll get better. It might push you past that art block and it might inspire you to do something different. Um, microphone that up let's see um let me make sure my setting is correct yeah my setting is correct i can turn this up just a little bit maybe um speech microphone Okay, usually it's fine, but the connection between my, the connection between my mic and my software has been a little, I don't know, jittery. Um, so I'm tempted to just not touch it. Um, is this painting for beginners? I, th I feel like all my paintings are for beginners. Um, I try to teach as much beginner um, content in a class as you want. And then sometimes I will give you, um, sometimes I'll give like tidbits of like for more advanced um, students that could maybe, you know, elaborate you know here and there or sometimes I know that I am going faster so then I will say okay for those of you who are more advanced you can do this or whatever um, but most of the steps that I do um, sometimes you'll see me doing something and I'm not necessarily teaching it because I know that that might be a little bit more advanced and for anyone who is advanced they could look at that and be like oh cool I'm gonna do that too um, but if if anything that I'm doing seems too like far like too far beyond your skill level, just don't do it. Um, you can also just ask questions. So if you miss something or if something seems too hard um, and you're like, hey, is there another way that we could do this? Um, feel free to ask. Uh, so I'm here, ask questions um, like during the class. That's why I love doing these live because um, you can ask questions and um, it's like you're here in person, except you're not, you're in your kitchen or your studio whatever I'm in my bedroom but I would love to be in a studio um, hi Amy from South Carolina okay so other people are saying they can hear fine okay yeah I don't know I don't know I don't know I know it's like not quite hitting the yellow bar which normally it is I know I will be a little bit closer when I'm teaching but okay I need to um, I'm gonna just do my traceable real fast while we're all on here. 
Um, and for those of you who weren't here earlier, I have traceables available in my Patreon. So um, if you wanted to have um, access to literally every single live class traceable that I've ever done, um, then become a patron. Um, that's one of the perks um, of supporting me, and um, you can do that. Um, or you can tip. There's other ways to tip but that's all it's all optional you don't have to do that um, I will be giving um, just a couple little tidbits on how to draw a bird if you've never drawn a bird or if you um, haven't drawn a bird um, if you are painting with us and you haven't drawn it on yet um, draw it with very very light pencil um, and just What's nice about using pencil is you can erase it, but if it's too dark um, and you push too hard, it can get in all the grooves and it can be hard to cover up. Um, so just be mindful of that. Let's see. Um, this is my first time. Your first time painting ever or your first time like during a live class. I wish I could have music on here, but I would get copyrighted strikes. <laughs> so I always have like music stuck in my head. Um, also, who knows what kind of a bird this is? A little trivia. I usually have like whatever the subject is, like the name of it. Like uh, we did a rose flower, like instead of flower, I, I named it pink rose, like I named it what it is. Um, but for this specific bird, I thought. I thought that it might be better that I don't, and once you find out what it's called, you probably agree. But who knows what this kind of bird is called. First time painting in live distance. Ah, got it. Yeah, it's fun. I'm glad you're joining tonight. you teach drawing the bird or is it tracing on the canvas um i'm tracing my traceable on the canvas um that's available to my patrons but i will be going over um just like basic shapes of how to trace it or how to um draw it if you're not using traceable um so i will be going over basic shapes um but i'm not going to be going like in depth of it um i hope that helps i will be going over like basics like positioning and sizing and everything so if you want to wait, you can. But if you're good at if you're good at um, like freehanding stuff, you can also do that. I just don't want to teach it right now because there's going to be a lot of people who aren't here right now, and then I'm going to have to teach it again. So I usually wait until the class officially starts to teach it. What's nice is most of this painting is like, most of this painting is just flowers and leaves and it's like, it doesn't necessarily need to look like proportionate in the sense of um, it's natural, it's nature, it's a tree, like um, things like that are 
all different sizes so like literally every one of our trees could have go in a different direction and it would look fine um, so that's really cool um, let's see okay so this is what mine looks like I don't know if you can see that a little birdie Does anybody know what the bird's called? I'm just curious. I don't know if anybody... Did anybody answer the question? Uh, scientific name. I don't know the scientific name. You know what? Google calls it. The picture? Yeah, I can show you the picture. It's not a cardinal. Cardinals are red. Um, oh, Ooh. I need to plug in my computer. It's not plugged in. Oh, did it come unplugged down here? Cardinal. Cardinals are red, I believe. I don't know if they come in different colors other than red. But speaking of red, I have started the beginning process of potentially. Oh, I don't have them here. Okay, never mind. Um, of potentially selling um, cards and things like that. So these ones are scrap, but um, I kept them for my mom. <laughs> um, but I had a cardinal that I did. Um, are cardinals different colors other than red? Or are they all red? It's not a wren. It's not a chickadee. Just joined. Are we drawing picture? Yeah. If you yeah, if you haven't drawn the picture um, and you feel comfortable doing it on your own, feel free to do that. Um, I would say that, um, if you're looking at the picture, um, it's in the top, for the most part, the top half, but there's a little bit of space above the head and then it's, um, you can do like in the middle or a little bit off to the side, but honestly you can put it wherever you want. Um, but just for the sizing, um, female cardinals are, that makes sense because boys are prettier boys are prettier they have more color blue flycatcher close it has blue in the name um so it's kind of hard to see in the picture um but the the tops of their head and the back um is actually like a bluish dark blue um Jan, so for every, everyone asking for the picture, in about four minutes, I'm going to switch to a different, um, pregnancy brain, to a different, like, picture, and you'll be able to see what we're painting, and you'll be able to draw it from there. Um, hello from Lakeside. Hi, Janet. Um, for anyone still guessing it's called a blue tit i believe it's one word it might be two but blue tit which is i'm like i don't really want that in the title of my video <laughs> i'm like that i don't really and the last one we did um was that pretty yellow butterfly i don't know who joined for that 
um, but that has such a long name for that butterfly. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say pretty yellow butterfly because that'll get probably more views and more clicks and people will be able to find yellow butterfly and not this crazy, really long name. What kind of a name is that? Yeah, I, mm, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I didn't, that's why I didn't, um, put it in the, in the title. I was just like, nope. Yeah. But I'm wondering if like, I mean, obviously blue came from the, like the back side of them. That's the cut, like the colors, like this really, it's almost like black, but then it has like this blue, almost like shininess to them um but i don't know where the other part came from um hello from texas my nine-year-old son and i will try our best oh well have fun um never done this so i am a newbie well glad to have you uh, so you can't get the traceable unless you have paid as a patron yeah so it's a perk um for my patrons um, for anyone who supports the channel or supports me as an artist, it's just a perk that I give them. Um, so if you are a patron, you have access to like everything, um, all live classes. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't give it out to people who aren't supporters. Um, hi from California. Hello, Holly. Hi, Ashley from Iowa. Okay. We have about two minutes left. I think I have all my paints out. I feel like I'm forgetting something. But don't, don't I always? Oh, I still have the trace of all <laughs> on the back of my canvas. Um, do we need to paint our canvas with gesso? Um, if you buy, if you buy like a, like a pre gessoed, like a pre-primed canvas which most art stores sell pre-primed canvases you don't need to um some people if you're using less quality paints i would say it's probably a good idea um it can't hurt because it helps get into all the grooves and makes it a little bit of a flatter surface um which makes it easier but it would have to be dry before you paint. So if you haven't already gessoed it, I probably wouldn't gesso it um, and just work with what you have. Um, the only exception to not gessoing like canvases that you buy in the store would probably be the Dollar Tree. Um, I don't know if they actually gesso their paint, their canvases. I know some of you do get their, them from the Dollar Tree. Um, but I've read that gessoing it um, makes the Dollar Tree canvases just more sturdy and just better. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone! Welcome back to another live class. Um, for anyone just joining, um, we just had our art you know, chat or welcome chat. So I got to know a little bit about some of you and where you're all painting from. Um, hello for anyone just joining. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the supplies that we're gonna be using first. Um, today I will be using um, the Hippie Crafter acrylic paints. Um, they sent me um, I did a review on them um, in the last video that you may have saw. So if you're not subscribed, um, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can um, get notified when I have new videos. Um, I did do a review of these. I love them um, so much that I am almost out of white. <laughs> so I will actually be using my Master's Touch um, acrylic white. Um, but yeah, so that's mostly the paint that I will be using. I'll go over my colors, my brushes, everything else. Um, and for future reference, I know a lot of you were having troubles finding the supply list and everything like that. Um, it is in three different places. So if you came from Facebook, it's not only in the event description, but I know some people have a hard time finding that. I'm not really sure 
why sometimes Facebook mobile is weird and you can't like expand it. Um, I, that's why I also post it in the event discussion. Um, so it's, it's always going to be pinned um, at the top of the discussion. So if you, there's two tabs, if you go over to the discussion, it'll be that top post and you just expand the post and it'll be in there. Um, I now have an Amazon shop with all of my um, recommended art supplies. And I believe one of the kits in there is still has a 50% off coupon. Um, so I know a lot of you took advantage of that, which is fantastic. So did I, I bought one um, and it seems legit. Like I'll, I haven't used it cause I want to give it to somebody, but um, it just comes with the, like literally everything you need for a paint night. Um, so if you're interested um, in buying a kit or extra supplies or anything you might need, um, I have an Amazon shop for that and you can find that on my website. Um, or linked on my Facebook page. Um, for supplies, so for the colors, I will be using white, blue, yellow, um, pink. If you do not have pink, you can use red and mix it with your white. Um, any orange that you see in the painting, we will be making with our yellow and pink, or you can use your yellow and red if you don't have pink. Um, the color I'm gonna be using is rose, but um, you can use magenta or really anything, any other pink that you have. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be using yellow medium. Um, actually, I might get out. I'm gonna be using yellow medium, but I also, I have this like super, it's like neon. It's called lemon yellow. And I feel like, look at this. I can't even, can you see the difference? This is my medium and this is my, it's a little bit brighter. Um, so just use whatever bright one you have. Just know that the brighter it, the yellow is, the more translucent it might be. So you might have to do a couple coats depending on the specific uh, paint that you have. Um, so I have my yellow and then, did I already say black? I have my black um, and then my raw umber. Uh, so the reason I'm using raw umber, you could skip that and just do kind of black and white for the um, almost like tr birch looking tree. I know it's not birch, um, but you could, but I'm going to add just a little bit of that brown. That's really the only place I'm going to put it probably. Um, but yeah, and then any green that you see in like the leaves and things like that, it's so yellow and we're already gonna have blue um, on, our, on our palette that I'm not even gonna get the green out. I'm just gonna mix a tiny bit of blue in there and it'll make that green, okay? Um, water, obviously, paper towel. I will be using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas um, a stretch canvas just means that it's like not a canvas board. It's got like sides and tops and bottoms. So I'll have to just remember to, um, paint the sides and then for brushes. So I have a brush kit that I recommend for all my, all my classes. Excuse me. It comes with such a variety of brush. I think there's like 16 or 18, I think it's an 18 piece. Maybe there's 16. I always forget how many brushes there are. Um, but there's a good variety. Um, so this is like most of the brushes. Um, I think I have like a few brushes in here that aren't in the kit. Um, but it's a really good variety. Um, it ranges from like $13 to $20 depending on when you buy it and where you're from. Um, so buy it when it's on sale. It's really great. Um, I've been using it for probably eight or nine months and everything's held together. I still use it. Um, the only thing I would say is that the small brushes have gotten a little bit frayed. So I have a couple other small brushes, but that's pretty typical, um, for like small brushes that need to be thin or whatever. Um, so yeah, um, for my, for most of the background, I would be using my, um, large filbert brush. I prefer large filbert brushes, um, rather than the, um, flat brushes because they seem to have less lines when I'm trying to blend, but obviously you can use what you have um, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, is that it? 
Um, other supplies could be like a washcloth, apron, that those sort of things. Um, and then obviously the traceable if you have it and you want it. Um, getting down to the actual drawing of the bird, um, you want to position it on your canvas um, if you want it like the painting. Um, it's a tiny bit off center, but you could put it in the center if you wanted to. Um, but just know that it doesn't it doesn't really matter if it's in the center. That's okay. Um, funny dog on a stick. It's not a dog. <laughs> it's a bird. Um, so if you wanted to put it in the middle, you could, um, but you don't need to. For the positioning, so this stick, this branch, goes about the middle. Um, you could move it a little bit down. I think I placed mine like just a just a hair too big or just a hair too um, high, but it's totally fine. Um, so it's about the middle and it kind of swoops. So I would put in just like maybe a line, just so you know where it's going to be. Um, you do not have to draw this in. It's just it was on my traceable, so I did. Um, but the size of the um, bird in regards to your size canvas so it's going to be different so like if I say oh it's as big as my hand that's going to be different if I have an 8 by 10 canvas because that's literally going to take up like the whole thing <laughs> um, so it's going to be about a little less than half or maybe it's actually half but just scooted down a little bit so that's about the size. So if you wanted to, you could always put like a little, two little markings so you know how big your bird's going to be. Um, and then for the width, it's about a fourth of the canvas. You see that? Maybe a little bit bigger. But you can always make things bigger. Um, so you can do that. So that hopefully that gives you some markers on where the bird is, where on the canvas it is, and also how big in perspective of your canvas. Um, let me know if you guys have any other questions in regards to drawing the bird on there. Um, I drew in some of these markings, um, but you don't necessarily have to do that because most of this is going to be covered in white. Um, as long as you have that outline that you want, um, you can. we can paint. You can go from there. Hello. Hi everyone. Um, while everybody is doing that, um, let me just go over um, a couple announcements. Um, in my Patreon, we have two classes this month. Um, one we already did. It was available um, beginning last Friday. And this is what we painted. We painted a rose, a pink rose. Um, it came out so nice. I'm really excited about it. Um, and I think it would be a wonderful gift if it were a card, like for like Mother's Day or Valentine's Day or anything like that. So I'm excited to make it into a card maybe later in life. Um, but there's that. And then the second one is going to be a coffee, like I say hot chocolate because I drink hot chocolate. But it's going to be a coffee mug um, kind of from the top down and like some books and stuff around it. Um, but that'll be our second class. Um for non-patreon so for uh, live classes our next one is aloha beach i'm sorry there's a chainsaw outside can you guys hear that <laughs> i swear it's comical so we live we live uh right behind a training fire station so sometimes we hear all the noises including oh my gosh <laughs> It's so distracting. Um, chainsaws, you know. Middle of the day on four o'clock. Um, let's see if I can focus. Pregnancy brain. Um, I know, right? Okay, as long as it's not distracting for you guys, I just have to focus. Um, our next class, our next live class. Okay, our next live class is, um, Oh, what's the date? I don't even know what the date is. Silly me. Um, it's in two weeks, so it's the 28th. Um, so it is a kind of a top-down, 
Um, it's already on my page. Um, so all the links for this is actually pinned at the top of my Facebook page, which if you haven't liked that, that's where I post like everything that's coming up, all the new classes, um, new Patreon stuff, just all the stuff. Um, so if you're not like, if you haven't followed me on Facebook, make sure to do that. Um, anyways, uh, so that class is already on there. Um, but it's a Aloha Beach. So that one, I will have a traceable for it, but I probably won't use it um, just because it's very free flowing. Um, that, that one is for sure a beginner, a beginner one. It should be pretty easy. Um, it'll be a lot of fun though. It's very simple, but it's very pretty. Um, so if you like beaches, make sure to, um, I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Um, other announcements. I don't think I really have any other announcements. I feel like I'm forgetting something. How's everybody doing the drawing? Let me know where you're at on drawing it because I don't want to move on and people are like, I don't have my bird and everything. So, um, essentially, let's see if you can see my bird up close. That helps. And this, the, like the feet are really rough. Like that's not really what the feet are gonna look like. And I know that, I just put it there. So I'm really just focusing on like the outer, the outer edge of it. Everything in it was just easy. Um, my bird is two round circles, that's fine. So essentially you probably have this circle right here and then hopefully your top circle overlaps. So you have two circles. Here, let me get a piece of paper. Actually, I can just show you. Where's my traceable? Okay. Um, okay, so here's the traceable that I used. Essentially, if you want to draw two circles, you have like this circle. And then you have another circle that's like overlapping it. Almost like a snowman, but you have this that's overlapped. Right? So this circle and this circle. And then you have a beak that comes out of the, these two circles. And the back side of this just connects. So hopefully that's helpful. I'll just leave that up for a second. Um, for anyone who's on Facebook, who's not a part of my Facebook community, um, that is where you will post your work after we're done. And so if you want to share your work with me, you want to share it with others, um, especially who were in this class specifically, um, I will be posting a, uh, like an album and you can just add your picture to that album and it'll all be consolidated. Um, it's a really cool thing where you go to the albums and you can see all of the classes that we've ever done, um, whether in Patreon or live classes and you can click on it and you can see everybody who painted it. So that's a really fun thing. Um, all right, everybody is ready to go. Perfect, okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in. Let's go ahead and get our paints out. Um, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get my paints. Um, just roughly outlined with watered down pale yellow paint. Good, that is a great, that's a great thing. Yeah, if you're not sure about using, um, if you're not sure about using pencils, then using, I used to do this all the time in my in-person classes, I used to just get really watered down paint and like sketch in, because you can always just draw. It's a lot easier to dr like paint over like line marks that are in, um, that are in the... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I have no idea what I was talking about. It's a lot easier. Man, this pregnancy, this pregnancy brain's getting me hard. 
It's in the middle of something. I have no idea. Oh my gosh. I feel awful. I apologize for my... Yes, we're doing the background first. So go ahead and get your white and then your yellow and a little bit of pink. It doesn't help that those guys are so loud and they're like throwing me off. I apologize. Okay, so I'm getting out my white, my yellow, and my pink because there is like a little bit of like a kind of an orangey color in the um, down here in the bottom. Can I turn this up anymore? Is this the last it goes? Um, give me a second. I'm gonna turn up brightness on my camera, um, on my palette, not my palette, my um, my canvas cam, so you guys can see it a little bit better. I don't know why it's so dark. Sorry, I'm saying um so much. It's my like thinking word. Okay. It's better when bright. Okay. Bright is up. I turned it down a little bit just because it was making it really uh like the brightness was making it grayed out and i don't want that because i want you guys to be able to see the colors i'm using i can always adjust it later um yeah for anyone asking about the outline you can't see the outline because i haven't drawn it on very dark um, because if i draw it on darker than it is i will i will have a hard time covering it up with the paints because most of this top area and most actually most of this is white um, so if you if it's really dark drawing on it'll it'll be really hard for me to paint over it and get rid of those lines um, so sorry if you can't see it very well um, okay so let me go ahead and get my brush out so get whatever brush you're using for the background just a large um, uh, does pink mean rose? Um, yeah, I have, I have rose. It's called rose, but pink, just whatever pink you have. Um, mine's called rose. I used to use magenta, um, so it doesn't necessarily matter specifically. Um, that's why I, I tend to not put like the color names on there because it's just whatever you have. Um, okay, so most of this is white, so I'm just gonna, you're not really going to see most of this. This is all going to be white. I'm just going to go on with a thick, or with a thin coat of white. I'm just using a pretty just like a, a thin coat so when I say thin it means it's um, not like super watered down but it does have a you know it, it's got water in it and if you've painted if you've um, sorry if you've drawn on here you'll have to make sure not to go over it too much because it will the the water will mix with the um the lead in the pencil so you have to be careful of that which is a lot of times what why i'll use like a colored pencil of some sort uh yes this all my live classes are available after i'm live all right so once i get to um, the edges, I'm going to add just like the tiniest bit of yellow. And even that I feel like is too much. 
go back into my white. I just want something at the edges so that it's not just plain white. And because this is all still wet, I'm just going to blend it in. Was there a stencil? Um, it's not a stencil. I have for patrons, those who are using, uh, those who support me on Patreon. Um, one of the perks I give them is um, is traceables. So for anyone who supports the channel, I give traceables too. So a lot of this you can't see because it is so it is so bright, um, but so bright as in so light. It's really just I'm using white, some water, and like the a, like a smidge of yellow, just so that it's not like pure white, and I can kind of see where I've painted and where I haven't. Um, but that's optional. painting with acrylic. Yeah, watercolors would be on a flat table if I was doing if I was doing that. Cuz watercolors, I don't think I've ever done watercolors on a easel like this. <laughs> I feel like that would be rather difficult. So I essentially did like the top half. Um, here's a bug. Go away. And now I'm going to do the bottom half. I used it a little bit over here, but again, I'm just using water and white. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the top and just add a little bit more of that yellow. To the bottom here while it's still, while the white is still wet. And that's just gonna tint it. In the bottom there is a little bit more color so you can go a little bit heavier with the color. So I'm using a little bit of yellow. I am grabbing just a touch of pink so it's not like just yellow. It's got like a tiny bit of that orangey vibe on it. And I imagine these are all the trees in the very far off distance.
add just a little bit more of that pink in the corner. Now I have a lot of yellow on my brush and I need to go back up into the white, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it off. Um, Ginger, I'm sorry I'm late taking care of grandson tonight unexpectedly. Uh, how will I get the traceable? I will attempt this tomorrow. Um, yeah, so this video is available. Um, it, it'll stay up on YouTube, um, so don't worry about that. The traceable is available for anyone who supports the channel um, via Patreon. Um, so if you're a patron, you'll have access to all my live class traceables. Um, so that's pretty much the background. Um, I added a little bit more on the top um, than was in there, but that's that's up to you. You can really do whatever you want. Um, this is your painting. Um, and I know in the actual painting, there's a couple dark spots right here. Like, do what you want. Um, this is your painting. You get to, you know, choose however you want to do it. Um, so the first thing we are gonna do is we are going to put in um, we are going to put in all of the blossoms and different colors that are in the background but are fuzzy so if you did the last couple of classes with me um, we've been doing like blurry backgrounds um, so um, yeah that's totally fine have a good night <laughs> um, we've been doing blurry backgrounds and it's like kind of become one of my favorite things and I know some of you have had a lot of troubles with that and you've totally gotten better and it's been turning around so that's like I'm so thankful that you guys are here and you're um, and you're painting with me so for anyone who's never done a blurry background essentially what you need to I'm, I'm also talking so that this will all dry um, what you'll need to do and just keep in mind is that anything with a crisp line will be, will be brought forward in the focus. But anything that has like, you'll notice this whole section down here is all just like a blurry thing. Like we know it to be the blossoms and the trees and things like that. But when you're looking at a picture, you have to kind of just paint what's there. And then after you paint the subject, your mind will like read it correctly if that makes sense so it's gonna feel weird um, painting some of these things in the background because it's gonna be fuzzy and not in focus um, and things like that um, but that's the point it's okay that it doesn't have those clean crisp cr wait clean crisp lines that we're normally taught to do right um, so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to get some of my colors. So I have, I already have the three colors that I need um, with the exception of my brown. So I'm gonna get my raw umber. Now this is a very dark color, so we will be adding a little bit of white to it. Cause we don't want it, um, if it's a really dark color, it'll be brought forward as well. So light, light colors will be pushed back dark colors and crisp lines will be brought forward. Okay, so this is dried a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and put in some of our fuzzy things. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, I will be grabbing my, just a medium to large size round brush. And with just the tiniest bit of paint, so I have water on my brush 
and just the tiniest bit of paint, okay? I'm just going to brush on just some of these colors and kind of, like, don't be too specific. It's in this area. You can always come back and darken certain areas. So now I'm going to rub that all off and just blend it in a little bit. So I'm just using my brush going back and forth, kind of blending it in with just a little bit amount of um, water on my brush. What color? The color I'm using is like that pinkish, the pinkish color that I have. So I'm making, I'm making all of those um, buds that are in the background right here. So if you have a pop of color, you can have that pop of color. Just make sure that the edges of it are all blended. So if I bring this close, I can have a pop of color here. I have a pop of color here, that's fine, but it's a little too defined. So I'm just gonna blend out the edges. You see that? And that's pretty much it. So now we're gonna take a tiny bit of our brown and white, maybe a little bit darker. Rinse off my brush because I don't need that much. Get just a little bit of that color that we just created. And we're gonna connect these like branches, like you would branches. You don't have to see all the branches. I'm just going to make these here. Now I know that this is too defined. So I'm just going to blend out the edges. It's okay if you can't see some of these um, some of these lines. Um, what is the name of this bird? The name of this bird is called a blue tit. I don't know why, but that's what it's called, which is why I named it Pretty Yellow Bird, <laughs> or Cute Yellow Bird, because I didn't want to name it that. <laughs> Alright, so you can do this pretty much as much as you want. Um, you can add more or less. I think I'm going to add some over here. Kind of just add these colors out here. Um, your camera has your canvas really blurry. I can't see any details. I'm going to tell you that it's not it's not blurry. My camera is not blurry. The reason it looks blurry is because I'm making it blurry. This happened in the last class too because I was making everything blurry. It looked like my canvas was out of like out of it looked like it was like not in focus. But in reality, it's because I was making the background out of focus. Like that was the point of it. I promise you it's in it's in focus. <laughs> But that's the point of this, right? We're supposed to be making things out of focus. So this is what it looks like. That's my little thing. Um, so now we're going to do this kind of in a couple other places. Um, there's, a, there's a patch up here that's a little bit more in focus um, than that one. But it's still 
Um, but it's still like, I don't know, out of focus, if you want to say that. There's a couple, couple pink spots over here. bird is in focus. Yeah, the bird's in focus. Uh, that paper is a good deal. I'm getting me some. What paper are you talking about? So I'm just adding a couple other spots back here. They don't have to be in the same spot that I do. Like, it's honestly, I just know that it's like somewhere over here. Um, and we can always add a little bit we can always add more in the background once we put in our like main our main ones. I kind of feel like a lot of this is um, kind of that watercolor esque because I am using quite a bit of water to not quite a bit, but there's you know it's not as much it's not thick like you know I'm normally painting acrylic. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the, the only thing I would say is that the, that specific paper, I mean, I, I use it all the time. You just kind of have to adjust, um, how you blend the backgrounds is it does because it is paper and it is not canvas material. It is paper. It's just, it's like text, like canvas textured paper. Um, it does dry a tad bit fast, uh, faster. Um, but if you are quick with your, with your backgrounds, um, it, it will help you be quick because you kind of have to, you have to work with it. Um, I mean, I've, I've been using it for a while. Like it's fine. It's really great for practice and anything else. Um, and it's a really great deal. It's a lot of paper for a little, it is a good deal. Um, but just know that bef like before you buy it, it does, it is paper. It is not canvas material. Okay, so I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna add a bunch of things to the background. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm not trying to deter you from getting it. It is a good deal and I use it all the time. Um, but just so you know, it's not like canvas material, which I've been trying to find canvas material. I was at Michael's, I think it was, and the first paper, like canvas pad of p paper that I got, um, it was like actual canvas material and it was wonderful. And then I bought one online and I was like, this is different. And I haven't been able to find like canvas, like material pad. Um, cause a paper pad is different. All right. So I'm just adding little bits of color everywhere over here. Um, cause I know once I start putting on, um, the details of this, it will, it'll just fade into the background and it will, it'll look fine. All right, um, let's see. Who's ready to move on? Let me know if, we can always add more of this in the background to fill in the gaps um, once we put in like our normal stuff, um, if we feel like it needs it. Um, so if you're, if you're, if you don't know if you're done, it's okay, we can move on, we can always come back to it. I'm sorry for the subtitles. Sometimes it doesn't pick up all of my wording. <laughs> okay, you ready? You can just give me a thumbs up, okay. Um, 
let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put in all of our little uh, branches so that we can let's block in our branches so that we can figure out where everything is coming from um, and then we can always finish our branch later so let's go ahead I'm gonna grab this kind of brown that I was using earlier I'm gonna use the same kind of brown color um, which is just my raw umber and my white <clears throat> And it's going to be fairly watered down just so that I can like swoop across quickly. I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening with my voice. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> so in San Diego, it's been like, today has been so hot. Um, I'm wondering if that has anything to do with the weirdness in my voice right now. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go all the way across. We're just going to put in our um, our branch. And if you're just drawing this in for the first time, branches are not straight most of the time at least for this branch it's not straight so if there's if you if yours is not straight great make it a little nub um have something come out of it have a little branch like maybe even a branch that's not there in the original picture that is okay um i want to stress that like we are using this picture this photograph as inspiration for our painting and we don't have to paint it perfectly. If we want to change something or add a branch or subtract a branch or whatever the case, like you can do that, okay? Let's see. There is a branch coming out here ish. See? Ish, you know. And I'm not I'm not like like Okay, if you look at this, I'm not like making it all filled in. There's holes in it. You can see the canvas through it. That's okay. I'm really just, again, I'm blocking it in. This is going to be covered with other paint, I assure you. I'm just getting the basic color of this in so that we can decide where we want all of our pretty things. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then there's one that I didn't draw in, but it comes out here, and it kind of comes out, and then it goes up, and then it kind of comes down, there's something that comes down, and there's ones that kind of go up, and then there's a bunch of, like, little things that come out, but we're just doing the branch right now. Okay, so that gives me that gives me a good idea of where everything is. So now I can start adding my flowers and my leaves. Um, so let's go ahead and start that. So I'm going to go ahead and get more pink out. This pink has just like a slight tint of blue in it. It's almost got like a purpley. Um, not the pink I'm using, but the pink in the um, 
in here. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't have to use the same colors. Um, but if you're wanting to try to color match everything, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put just the tiniest bit of um, phthalo blue on my palette. And we're gonna go ahead and mix a bunch of this. So I'm gonna grab my palette knife. I just have a little teeny tiny palette knife. Um, all of the supplies that I use you can find in the description below or um, my Amazon shop. So I'm gonna grab just the tiniest bit of um, blue and I'm gonna mix it in with this pink. And I can tell that this is a little bit too purple, but I kind of like it. So I'm gonna use it for some of my darker shades of pink and just put a little bit more pink um, on the on the palette. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So now I kind of have my like my dark shade of pink, or like my low lights, if you want to say. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my medium filbert brush. Uh, the reason I'm using my filbert brush is because it is round. Um, we can have fun with a couple other techniques a little later, but for right now I'm using my filbert brush. It is already round. Um, and I'm going to take some of this pink and I'm just going to start putting on some of these flowers. Oh, and I did have, there was one that was like up here. What brush am I using? I'm using my filbert brush, my small filbert. And don't worry if they're if they're you know not dark enough. You can always darken them. Right now, it's really just kind of getting getting them all on there, and we can change the colors as we go. Try to focus on the one, try to focus on the flowers that are behind the leaves or not covered by leaves. And you can do these in a couple different ways. So for instance, this one, I just did a straight, a straight shot and you can come on the other side and make it round right so there's that way and then the other ones I turn I turn my brush to the side Sorry, I just got black on my brush I turn my brush to the side and I'm gonna go up and kind of create petals where it's a little bit more open does that make sense You can make a couple like that. You come to a point. And if you want to try a different brush than what I'm using, that's okay too. You don't need to use the same brush that I'm using to get the same effect. Um, or maybe you want to do a different effect or you're more comfortable with a different brush. Like that's okay.
It's a big kind of like open one that's right here. So again, I'm just focusing on the ones that are behind the leaves. Or kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And this is the part where like some people can get discouraged. I want to just encourage you, don't get discouraged at this part. I feel like every painting kind of has like it kind of has like an ugly stage. And this is kind of one of those where it's like you have like some of the details in there, but like honestly, you're really just putting a bunch of blobs down and they don't really look like flowers, but then they kind of do and like um, you can get to like it's really easy to get discouraged at this and be like you know what I'm done I don't even know what I'm doing trust the process trust that there is a process and this is part of it just trust me So for the most part, I'm going based off the picture, but there are a couple of these that I'm like, oh, I just feel like I want to put one here. <laughs> and that's okay if you feel like something should go somewhere else. Like that's, you are okay to make those decisions. Because it's your painting. I think one of my favorite things about doing paintings online is one, because I get to paint with so many people. Um, for instance, there's like almost 200 people here, which is fantastic. Um, but one of my other favorite things is that like every single one of our paintings is going to look different. And that like excites me. Like it just, I don't, I don't know. It just does like we're all painting the same thing, but they're all going to look so different and they're all going to look so good, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. All right, so let's see. <laughs> I think now that I have um, most of that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to different colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the super vibrant green that we have. Um, and I'm probably going to use all this yellow, so I'm not going to worry about, um, you know, having yellow later because I can always put yellow back on the canvas. And I'm going to use, like, literally nothing of this blue. Actually, I'm probably going to need more of this, so I'm just going to go ahead and put more of this. This is a bit too green. Actually, I kind of like this for my the darker areas, I think. So I'm gonna make a slightly lighter yellow, yellow green.
So what I'm doing right now is I'm just making two different yellow greens. One's a little bit lighter, one's a little bit darker. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to this one. Now if you have these different colors like on hand, then you don't need to you don't need to mix them. You can just use those. Um, but I don't have any colors like this. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I could mix them. There we go. Went ahead and mixed those. And then I'm also gonna mix up, there's like these really pretty like pinkish orange uh, orange ones. Um, leaves so I'm going to also grab a little bit of pink and a little bit of this green yellow and that'll kind of give me that orange yeah that's perfect you could have used yellow but I just used the the lighter of the two green green yellows and it's fine okay so moving on I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of these leaves now um, you can do them so the cool thing about these leaves is they are very bright and you can pretty much see through them so if you don't if you can see through them and like you know see through some of them like that's okay um, the first thing I'm gonna do though is put in some of these that color that's kind of in the background because we didn't do that before so that includes a little bit of it down here there's a little bit of these green colors and yellow colors down here I'm just gonna rinse my brush brush my brush off <laughs> and kind of blend it in a little bit. Like that. I think I added a little bit too much, but that's okay. So first you're going to do that and then you're going to add um, to the kind of like what we did here with some of these kind of in the background blurry but know that these figures are just a little bit bigger because they're leaves and not they're the, they're the leaves and not the um, the buds and the blossoms.
right, so I think I pretty much got all the background in there. So now I'm just gonna go back in. Um, because all of these are attached with um, almost like these orange and white uh, orange stems, um, I am going to um, I am going to go in with my stems now, and that'll kind of give me direction of where everything is. Um, the key with this is to just have a lot of them. Um, part of it is just to have them go everywhere. Um, and you can cover some up, you can create more if you need to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my liner brush. If you don't have a liner brush, you can use just the smallest uh, smallest round brush that you have. Um, how did you get that light green? I got that light green um, by putting my the brightest yellow that I had. So I used, initially I used my med medium yellow, mid, mid yellow, um, but then I also ended up using my lemon yellow, which is just a really bright yellow. And then I added a touch of phthalo blue to it. Um, which I think I might, I was using the darker color for these and they ended up being really yellow. Uh, so for more of the green parts, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more blue to it. So just so you know. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my liner brush. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I'm gonna go into this kind of orangey color that I created, uh, which I created with pink and yellow. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where these are all coming from. So they're gonna come out from a couple different places, okay? But there's one that's coming out from this little nub, okay? So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go over. With liner brushes, you wanna make sure to have a good amount of water mixed in with your paint so that it goes on smoothly. You can have a couple come out here they can cross each other. I'm putting a little bit more pink into this orangey because I feel like it's not dark enough. Then there's, there's a little branch that comes out this way from here and a bunch of them cover up a bunch of them come out here and this is where I'm also gonna gonna connect these ones So focus on connecting some of these, but then you also want to just have a ton of these because not only do the leaves connect to these, but also the buds connect to them. So you're just going to want to have a bunch. And you're going to do the same thing over here. Um, the concoction over here is a little bit whiter. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of white to this same color, making sure to equal parts it with water. This is a little bit more in the sun.
Hi, Sky. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for anyone who's just subscribing. Um, if you want to, um, if you want to have all the notifications for when I go live or when I um, put out new videos and things like that, um, I do speed paintings and reviews. Um, and I used to do vlogs uh, before I was um, before I was pregnant. I don't really have time for it right now because I'm spending a lot of time sleeping and you know growing a baby. But <laughs> um, I plan to put those out more if you if you like the behind the scenes sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a fun thing. This light comes in and then all right. So a lot a lot of it is coming into this one alright so now that I know that I have all of my um, now that I know I have stems that go to all of my buds now I'm just gonna put in all the ones where the leaves go to so anyone where I'm gonna probably put a leaf I'm just going to put them out. And it's okay if you end up having a stem that doesn't go, in it, go to anything. Because um, it's not really going to look out of place. Like, it just really won't. There's going to be so much going on. Um, and anything that looks out of place, you can just cover up with a leaf. <laughs> um, yes, all my live classes are saved to my YouTube page and will be available after the class. Let's see. A couple here. So now that I have that, I'm going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to work back to front with all of the leaves. So what we'll probably do is you'll put a couple on there and then you'll let it dry and move to another spot and then put a couple over there and then let it dry as you move to another spot. So you just kind of keep doing that, trying to work from front to back, okay? Um, so like I said before, I feel like my two colors were too bright. Um, so I'm going to add blue to this lighter green one because I'm not going to use it because that, uh, that other darker green was already, um, it was already on the dark side. The dark side. <laughs> Okay, so now I feel like I have a highlight and a low light, which is what, that's where I want to be. And I'm going to use a, let's see, I'm going to use a, hmm, you can use whatever brush you want. I'm going to try out two different brushes for this. I'm going to try out my filbert brush, which I'm probably most comfortable using, but I'm also going to try out my, um, what is this called, a, an angle brush. So um, in face painting, which I used to do um, for leaves, you would use the angle brush and make two sides of the leaves like that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out. It's up to you how you want to do it. I'll probably end up just using, um, I'll probably just end up using a, hmm, 
I like that. I think I'm gonna go the other direction. All right, yeah, so you can use whatever you want. Um, so well, how I'm doing mine is with a, with a, um, with a angle brush. I'm flaring it out and then coming back in. And I'm doing each side by itself. And I'm just going straight over. Um, whatever like I'm using these as a guide for where that brush is gonna go Just make sure that you remember that not all of the leaves are going to be facing you like flat. So some of them you're only going to see like the side of the leaf, you know. And the orange is going to be like the middle piece of it. Thank you for subscribing. At this point, let me know if anybody has any questions. Um, patrons, if you are, if you have um, done the one stroke rose class with me, which is available in there, um, I talk about how you load, you can load the brush with two different colors. You can also do that here. So for anyone wondering, um, you can load the brush with like a light green and a dark green at the same time. You just have one brush, one, like the light side on one side and then the dark side on the other. And then you, you can kind of get a two-toned, you can get a two-toned um, leaf. You're welcome.
I'm just going back and forth, adding adding leaves where I feel like they should be. If you want to add them in different places, you can do that. Make sure to vary the size um, and the angles that you're seeing them at. There are a couple in here that you can add um, and be a little bit lighter. So like you can add a little bit more yellow to your concoction or maybe some white so it's not as bright. Just adding the variance, the variances of it all um, really ties in the whole nature aspect of it. You're welcome. This is a fun thing I get to do, so. All right, so I think we're far enough along where we can do the, let's go ahead and do the branch because we don't want to, we don't want to have not enough time for the bird, okay? Um, so I don't want to spend too much time in the background and not have enough time for the bird. Because um, I do usually, I usually um, kind of, uh, I like to keep these at two hours. So um, let's go ahead and do the, just, I, I guess, a second coat of the um, branch, which is just that brown, um, the... I'm going to do a medium brown um, and then what I'm going to do um, is put on some texture with the white and a dark brown. Um, the white will help make it more opaque um, because the the stuff over here is all behind it's all behind it sure that if you're you if you have a stretch canvas that you wrap the canvas you go around the other side
and already it is starting to come together. Okay, so now there's two different ways that you can do this. You can use a palette knife um, or you can use your um, just one of your smaller brushes and just put on some texture. Um, I'm going to use a palette knife because I love using palette knives and I don't do it very often anymore now that I'm kind of painting from real photos. Um, so let me find... Actually, I'm going to use my small one because it is quite a small area. Um, so if you have a palette knife and you would like to use it, go for it. Um, I encourage you all the more. Um, I love using a palette knife, so I will help you. If you have a palette knife and you've never used it before, I will definitely try to give you as much tip as I can. Um, and if you're afraid of using the palette knife, don't be. It gets better. Um, this is a really easy way of just adding texture to um, something. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit of this brown. I'm going to scrape the side of it so it's mostly on the edge. Uh, let's see. So it's mostly on this edge right here. And I'm just going to scrape up. And you can, you can put on a couple little things here and there, some different, different details. Remember that it's a stick, so it doesn't like have to have a certain pattern, right? If you get too much on there, you can kind of just scrape it off and that's, that's okay too. Sorry, I just I hit stuff. So right here you can tell that I had too much on here, but that's fine. I'm just gonna pretend that it goes thicker. Um, but if you wanted to wipe that off, you could get a clean brush, a clean um, like a clean wet brush and just just rub it off like that put a couple more dark pieces in here And then I'm going to do the same thing. So if you were doing this with a um, with a different brush, like a brush, um, just take a brush and just start dabbing in little pieces. So like if I wanted to do that with this brush with my white, I would just get some white on here and I would just barely touch it. I would just barely touch it. I might like do some downward strokes. Like this and just kind of put in that texture by yourself um, I am gonna use not um, not straight white because I think that that's a little bit too too much I think in some like some spots and areas it's okay, but not for the whole thing. I just love the look of 
the texture that a palette knight gives on like trees it's just it's like one of my favorite things Let me know if you're using a palette knife. I would love to know if anyone's using one with me. So that's pretty much the palette knife. You tried the palette knife. How did it work? How did it go? I love using a palette knife. And when I first started using a palette knife, I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified of it. <laughs> um, and halfway through it, but like the whole thing was palette knife painting. Um, actually, for those of you who have painted me this long, it was uh, that one, the owl. Like I got through it halfway through it and I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. This looks awful. And then I just trusted the process and kept going. And I was like, oh, this actually looks really cool. I love palette knife painting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of these. Uh, there's like one of these uh, pinkish orange ones down here. Um, good, I'm glad. I'm glad you had the confidence to do it. Some, a lot of people, it's really hard for them to overcome that. I'm just putting in a couple of these like multicolored ones. They're like pinkish. Okay. That's pretty much it. Real quickly, I'm just gonna put in more of these um, buds because I know that they're there and I don't wanna forget about them. But I can honestly, I can always come back and make them better, but I don't wanna run out of time for the bird.
Like I don't I don't want to rush the bird. So I do we do have like a half an hour to do that. <laughs> Which should be enough time, but I'll probably go over if it's if I feel like I'm being rushed. Let's get to the bird. We can always add more details around it. Ugh. Okay. Oops. Apologize. Um, okay. We're good. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just block in our basic colors. So I'm going to start with my white. I'm going to start with my white, lock in where my white is, it's a little bit of white on the forehead, and it goes into the blue part, and the white goes around kind of like a band. And then this part is white over here. And I had some yellow on my brush, so don't mind that. Um, let's see. I need some yellow. Just block in my yellow which is most of this area, I believe. And it goes into a little bit of white here. And then got like the blackish area. I'm gonna put brown for now, but I'll probably make it darker. Brownish blue. It's actually just a dark blue. And I'm going to grab this phthalo blue. I'm not really rinsing out my brush because I'm just blocking in the colors right now. Now whenever you're doing fur or feathers, you want to get in the habit of just like putting it on in little tiny strokes. And that will help give the look that there's a lot of feathers or a lot of pieces of fur, if that makes sense. Granted, this is just like the early stages, but 
moving forward, you wanna you wanna go little little sections at a time. Also, I realized something that I forgot to draw in. <clears throat> And even in the traceable is the tail. The tail comes out here like this. So there is a tail here. I'll fix the colors later but how's everyone doing how's everyone liking it I hope I hope everyone's doing okay <laughs> haven't heard from you guys in a while awesome I'm glad Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm still kind of blocking in my colors. I got my white down here. And I'm going to put in some more white here because I know it's How did I get the feather texture? How do I or how did I? Because I haven't done it yet. Um, there's a couple different ways which I'll show you. I'm, I'm still kind of blocking in just the basic colors. Um, but what I was saying before is like anything that you have like feathers um, or fur when you're putting on the paint, you want to get in the habit of doing it in a bunch of little strokes. Like a bunch of lines in a sense. And that will help give the illusion that there's a bunch of feathers or a bunch of pieces of fur. This particular bird looks very fuzzy and furry versus like a feather, um, like a hummingbird of some sort. Um, they have much more like shimmery feathers versus like this is very fuzzy and fluffy. Okay. There is the tiniest bit of this blue that kind of outlines. This. I'm just trying something out to see if I want to teach it this way or a different way and I think I like the way that that looks. Um, I just need to figure out this part. Okay, so how we're going to do the top is you're going to get a small brush, um, either a liner brush or a small brush. 
You can use a fan brush, but I hesitate to use a fan brush on this specifically because it is a very small, um, it's a small space. So if you have a brush like this one, um, where it's like, I don't know if you can see that here, hold on. If you have a brush like this one where it like, it breaks apart, you could use one of those. Um, I don't know the actual name of this brush, but it does give a bunch of lines. Um, so that could be helpful. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, that works. That's helpful. Um, um, I do want this a little bit darker, though, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my black. Eileen, you gave up on what? Gave up which part? Because we're, we're only just starting to get into the details of the bird. I'm going to go ahead and put the eye in because I know that once I put the eye in, it's going to all come together. Let me know if I can help you in any way. So I feel like you've come this far already. All right, so I'm just darkening, darkening up some of these um, spots in the middle here. I feel like they just need to be, the base color should be darker before I start adding any highlights to them. And then this part here I feel like should be darker. So I'm just see if you watch me add this these, this color I'm doing it with a small brush and I'm doing it in small little bit like small little bits small little amounts and I'm kind of flicking my brush a little bit I'm gonna darken up his foot right here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put in his foot just kind of like a brownish white it's almost the same color as the um as the branch a little bit of white to his legs because I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a 
highlight on these. These are just little details that you can always add later. So I'm done, pretty much done with the feet. Um, I'm probably not going to do any more with the feet. But for the rest of it, now that I've blocked in most of this, um, the highlights on the beak, so like the top part of the beak, does have some blue in it. So I'm just going to put that in there. too much water on my brush so it kind of ruined that part but that's okay I'm just gonna go back in with my white add that highlight on the very tip and then the bottom um, don't forget the highlight in the eye And now we're going to go ahead and try to put in some of these details. So if you have, depending on what brush you have, if you have one of these brushes where it like, um, it feathers out by itself, you can use that. Um, or you can just use any small, any like uh, round brush. And I'm going to work my way from the bottom to the top. Okay. So I'm going to start with this kind of uh, brownie white color that's like here at the bottom start getting those little brush strokes in and you want to have just enough water on your brush that it's easy to go on but not enough that you can like see through it. And I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see. Even though I know that this color is white, it's white on the bird, we have to look at the color of what it actually is in the picture. And it's kind of like a darkish gray color. And then we can come in with our, um, our yellow color. 
which I'm going to mix some of this with a tiny bit of black. And that was too much black. So I'm mixing in a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna try this other, so you can do it the same thing that I just did with the small brush. Um, I'm gonna try this other brush and see how it works, see if I like the way it works. And you're going to just brush down. And I'm not really liking it. It's not separating as much as I would like it to be. So I'm going to go back to my small brush. And you can spend as much time on this as you want. The part is to have um, a different colors to contrast with. So as you're going up, start adding those different colors of maybe this part's a little bit darker, maybe this part's a little bit lighter, and that will give you those highlights in there every so often. Hopefully this is all making sense. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to start with kind of this um, dirtier white, I should call it. It's kind of a brown a brownish white tablet of black in it. With your white, you're going to cover up the side of the black.
Yes, I'm holding it fairly loosely. And the reason why is because I want it all to be, I mean, I'm holding it fairly close to the, um, the, uh, the furl. And I'm just doing a bunch of small little strokes. Um, because there's so many of them, like, you just want to get as many on there as you can. And I'm not being too particular about, like, where they're going, if that makes sense. Other than, like, the general area. Adding the white on the edge here because that's where the brightest is. Was the yellow still wet because the black didn't smear it? Um, which which part are you referring to? I'm not sure. I'm working on mostly dry paint right now. The amount of paint that I'm putting on isn't so much that it's staying wet for too long. Fuzzy left breast. Um, yeah, that's all dry. Pretty much everything that I'm doing is just drying really fast because there, I'm not putting on a whole lot of paint. And because I have the base color on here, I really only have to put in a couple details on the edges to make it look fuzzy. 
So for instance, up here, I just have to fuzz out the edge. All right, so now I'm gonna work um, from back to front from the back of the head to here. Let me just zoom out a little bit. And we're almost done. It really does, yeah, if I zoom out the whole way. And that's what, that's pretty much what it looks like. Give a little bit of a lighter shade right here. Now that I can see the whole picture. Yeah, Pat, that definitely takes some practice. Um, it's not it's not necessarily the most easy easiest thing to do. So there's a little bit of some blue highlight back here. I'm just going to brush that into the yellow a little bit. You really just want to make sure that the, the joining lines are, are fuzzy, you know? And you can even go in a little bit to the, go in a little bit with the blue.
light blue or dark I have mine is the dark blue because it's still it's still a pretty harsh dark line right there and I'm gonna come back with the white which is the pure white and do the same thing but the other direction. I'm just kind of redoing my head because it got a little bit green um, so don't mind don't mind me <laughs> all right so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my white Feather it out right here. Which I'm also going to do here, but I have to wait till it dries so I can properly get the color down. Alright, while I'm waiting for the rest of the bird to dry, um, I'm going to go back and add a little bit of detail to the rest of my painting. Which you can either do or you can leave it however you want. Um, but while this is drying, I'm going to add some of that detail. Um, which includes um, some of this darker color that we have. I have some of this kind of purpley color. That I'm going to add um, to the I, I want to say roots but it's not really the roots uh, like where it's stemming from there's a little bit of darkness and this is really just going to elevate any detail that you already have you can add shadows with this and it's a really just a quick way of adding some detail. So essentially at all the roots. And for anyone that has to leave, um, thank you for being here. Don't forget to post your artwork in the artist community. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit and just kind of finish finish this because I'm almost done. And I'd rather not I'd rather not rush it, you know. So adding that darkness really does well. It just looks, I am using the small, uh, like medium round brush, just so I can get that tip in there. And I'm really just, I'm really just dry brushing this. What color was it again? Um, I'm using that purpley tone that I made, um, which was the magenta, or sorry, the rose, the pink color, and the blue. So the pink color and then the, um, the whatever blue you have. Um, so first I'm adding some of these dark colors, some of this dark color. a 
add a little bit of variety to it. And then I'm going to come back and add white. So I'm adding white to, there's like a pink one down here that had a bunch of white on the tips. And then there was a couple up here that had it. And essentially you're gonna add, you're gonna add white to anything that needed to be like opaque. So especially for these one, these flower buds that like are in front of everything else that you can probably kind of see through. You want to add a little bit of your white and maybe another layer of your pink to those so that they stand in front of the, um, that, so that they're in front of the, the branches and everything. Dry brushing is when you have little to no water on your brush. You have just paint and you're putting that paint on dry paint canvas. So the wet on wet is when you have wet paint, sometimes water in that, and wet canvas with like wet paint. Um, you can do a wet on dry, which is kind of what we did for this kind of blurry background. It was really watery and it was really wet. Um, a dry brush is just really when you have barely any paint or you just have paint and no water um, and you're putting it on a dry canvas. white to some of the ones over on the left or the right hand side. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for everyone for joining me. Um, we are pretty much at the end of our class. Um, and if you have to leave, that's totally fine. Um, I want to go ahead and just finish the bird real fast now that this is dry. And then I will sign it. And I'll be off as well.
that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more thing and just go, there's a little white strip of eye that goes all the way around there. And that's pretty much it. I, I keep saying it's it, but then I keep adding more. <laughs> oh, life of a painter. Okay, I need to put it down because I have kids I need to attend to. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put, where should I put my initials? I'm going to put it in the bottom left corner because we have this one over here. So I'm going to put it over here. And I'm just going to sign it in this kind of darker green color. I wish I could paint. I would paint for so much longer if I could, adding all the details, making this like probably one of my favorite paintings because I actually really like it and I want to add all the details, but I have kids and I need to be a responsible adult and mother. <laughs> but. But thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, especially for all those who have um, donated money or anything like that or become patrons. Um, I really appreciate it. Me and my family really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Um, we have an I have another one in two weeks. Every two weeks um, I have one. And um, yeah. I'm actually going to sign it in a darker color because... The green is really hard to see. I'm kind of signing it in like this purpley color. There we go. That's better. But yeah, I like him. I think he's cute. Um, I would love to see everybody's uh, rendition of it. So if you um, are not a part of our um, artist community on Facebook, make sure to head on over there. It's just um, Samantha Anderson. Uh, it's uh, Facebook slash groups slash Samantha Anderson artist. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, someone's asking, I missed the first part of class. Sorry, what kind of paper and paint did you use? I used acrylic and this is on a stretched canvas, 11 by 14. But all of that is in the beginning of the video, which you can rewatch after um, I'm done with this. All right, I will see you all next time. Have a great night. Bye guys.